We all know that uh, catalysts can lower the chemical reaction energy barrier. But can we make the energy barrier negative? Can we make the enthalpy of activation negative? Uh, in this uh, Journal of Chemical Education paper published in 2017, volume 94, issue number 6, pages from 821 to 823, uh, I explained this phenomena using a numerical example implemented in uh, Microsoft Excel. So if we look at a complex mechanism from A to C and C to P, uh, it consists of four elementary steps. So that's from A to C, C to A, and then C to P and P to C. Therefore, you have K1 forward, K1 reverse, K2 forward, and K2 reverse. So uh, I gave a numerical example in the uh, Journal of Chemical Education paper. So let's say we have A, C, and P, and then two transition states, one between N, C, and another between C and P. And I gave some numbers here. Let's say the relative enthalpy of A, TS1, C, TS2, P, R, 0, 20, negative 10, negative 9, negative 40 kilojoule per mole. I'm using A as the zero reference. So all other numbers are relative quantities. And let's say entropy of A is zero. Again, I mean, it's just because I arbitrarily uh, choose A as the zero reference. And let's suppose the uh, relative entropy of TS1 is zero, C is zero, TS2 is negative 100, P is zero. And then we can easily compute the Gibbs energy of every species given a temperature. Let's say 600 Kelvin degrees and then we have the uh, Gibbs energy of every single species in kilojoule per mole right here by using G equals H minus TS. All right, so we got those numbers. And then we do some analysis. If the reactions between A and C, I mean the forward and reverse reactions, are much faster than the reactions between C and P, then we can use the so-called pre-equilibrium approximation. That means A and C are always at equilibrium. And then if uh, the uh, reaction rate from P to C is so small, in this case, if you look at the G value, from P to TS2, so there's a Gibbs energy of activation of more than 100 kilojoule per mole. Uh, this is a very large number. That means the reaction from P to C is extremely slow. So we can safely neglect this uh, K to R. This is extremely small. So if we do that, uh, and then we can write out this uh, pre-equilibrium approximation between N and C this way, K1F times A equals K1R equals C. This is pre-equilibrium approximation. And then we can express the concentration of C in terms of the concentration of A. And then we know dP over dT, that's the production rate of P, is equal to K2FC. Again, we neglect the consumption of P here because this K2R is extremely small. All right, and then we can have this uh, expression a bit complicated here, uh, which is a constant times A. That constant is... Uh, the effective reaction rate constant. All right, we can see dP over dT is a effective reaction rate constant times A. And this effective reaction rate constant equals K2F times K1F over K1R. And this K1F over K1R is simply the equilibrium constant between A and C. And <clears throat> Starting from this Irene equation, we can expand delta G into delta H minus T delta S. So we have this uh, a bit more complicated expression here. And then if we take the logarithm of K over T, so we move this T to the left hand side, we got a linear equation here. The natural logarithm of K over T is proportional to 1 over T. 
with a slope negative delta h double dagger over r with an intercept uh, which is the natural logarithm of kb over h plus the entropy of activation over r so over here we assume delta s double dagger and delta h double dagger are in independent of temperature uh, this is a, um, a fairly reasonable and accurate approximation as long as we're not talking about a, a temperature range that's too wide so as long as the temperature range is within tens of uh, degrees Celsius, we can use this approximation. Again, we assume delta S double dagger and delta H double dagger are independent of temperature. And then uh, we again look at this uh, uh, equation for effective rate constant. It's this. And then uh, we combine one, two, three, the three terms together we find that the natural logarithm of the effective rate constant over t is proportional to 1 over t and this time with a slope uh, like this this is negative delta h of effective uh, pre-equilibrium approximation double dagger over r so this guy is assuming 1 pre-equilibrium approximation 2 this delta h double dagger is independent of temperature within a moderate temperature range so this guy can be expanded into actually this term so uh, this is from k to f this is the um, uh, enthalpy of activation of the uh, forward reaction in the second step and this hc minus ha come from uh, this term again uh, if we combine this two we simply find that this delta h the effective delta h of uh, uh, using pre-equilibrium approximation double dagger is equal to the enthalpy of the second changing state minus the enthalpy of uh, the reactant A and in our numerical example this guy is uh, 0 uh, this guy is negative 9 so uh, in this case we find that uh, the effective enthalpy of activation using the pre-equilibrium approximation is negative 9 kJ per mole in another video, uh, I proved that the activation energy barrier is equal to the enthalpy of activation plus RT, again, uh, given a moderate temperature range. And in this case, we just plug in negative 9 here. And over here, I used uh, 600K, and R is 8.3 Joule per mole K. So if you sum it up, you get negative 9 plus 5. Uh, the result is negative 4 kilojoule per mole at 600K. Again, the negative uh, activation energy is obtained this way. So uh, to visualize uh, the numbers, uh, here are two graphs in that Journal of Chemical Education paper. Over here, this is relative enthalpy. Again, A is used as a reference. So it's zero here. Change to say 120. Uh, this C is in the median, negative 10. Uh, enthalpy, uh, TS2 negative 9, and the product negative 50. So if you compare this negative 9 with this 0, you can see actually this uh, energy barrier, or uh, more accurately, we should say the enthalpy of the uh, transition state 2 uh, lies below the initial reactant structure. All right, and then we look at the uh, uh, Gibbs energy of all five species. Again, we used uh, this A as the zero reference, therefore this is zero here. And then the forward uh, Gibbs energy of activation is 20, the backward is 30. So from negative 10 to 20, the difference is 30. And then I gave three data here at uh, 600K, 660K, and 140K. We'll use 600K data, so the green data here, 51. So if you look at negative 10 to 51, the Gibbs energy of activation is 61, so it's slow. And if you look at this backward from negative 50 to 51, the Gibbs energy of activation is 101, so it's extremely slow. That's why we can neglect this K2R. And again, even this uh, K2F, the forward reaction rate of the second step, is much slower than this K1F and this K1R. Therefore, we can assume this A and C are always at equilibrium.
All right, for a more detailed explanation, I would like you to uh, uh, consider uh, reading this uh, Journal of Chemical Education paper. Uh, here's the title, and uh, this is the graphical abstract. Uh, again, I'm using uh, a temperature roughly around 600 Kelvin. From left to right, you can see the temperature decreases and the reaction rate increases as the temperature decreases. And uh, by using the numbers on this graph, we obtain the slope multiplied by negative R, we get negative 4 kJ per mole as the activation energy. So it means in principle it's possible to use a catalyst to make the activation energy negative. But it's rare, again, because uh, we need to satisfy two conditions. One, we need to make sure that this uh, pre-equilibrium approximation is legitimate. That means K1F and K1R are much, much greater than this uh, K2F. And also, K2R is negligible. Okay, K2R must be negligible. So that's the first condition we need to satisfy. The second condition is if you look at the uh, relative enthalpy, the enthalpy of the second transition state here must be lower than the enthalpy of the reactant A. So only if both conditions are satisfied, we will be able to observe a negative energy barrier and a negative enthalpy of activation. Thank you.